Are you on the fence about which MacBook 14 inch to get, the Pro chip or the Max chip? Well, I've got them both here. I've got the beefed up version of the Max chip and then a base model of the Pro chip. We're gonna run through some tests in Premiere. We're gonna do a render test and then we're also gonna do a couple export tests. We're gonna be using 8K footage 6k footage and then we're going to open up a session from my last video because when i was working on this with the max version i actually got the fans to kick on and let me tell you those fans were really loud and so that was a huge red flag for me let's see at the end of the video if we can recreate that get these fans to kick on and see what's going on with these This is all 8K footage in ProRes RAW. So we have a few 8K clips loaded up. Let's just do a render test. And we're also going to hit the stopwatch on the iPad here. So here we go. There we go, the max is done. <laughs> the base model still at 50, oh, 60, here we go. It's finally catching up. So if you can see here also, we're having some major problems playing back. While oh, the max looks really nice. Let's play them both at the same time. All right, so as you can see, the max is just killing it. But definitely no problem for the max. And it's having so many problems, it can't even play at the correct frame rate. So in render and playback, the max definitely wins. I mean, look at that, it's super smooth, no problem. So let's give the space model a chance to redeem itself and do some exports. Why don't we do Apple ProRes 422 as our first test? And then our second one, we'll try a uh, 4K YouTube preset that I use most of the time. Okay, so we're both set at Apple ProRes 422 high quality. And I'm not even going to mess around with the media encoder. I'm just going to export straight from Premiere. So we're both set at QuickTime, Apple ProRes 422, base model, max model. So far the max is about to lap the base model, but we'll see what happens here. So off we go, hit the timer. Okay, so it looks like the base model has finished its export first. And the max is still chugging away. Which is very surprising. All right, this is very confusing. I'm not sure why the max is just chunking along. All right, the Max chip version has finally exported. 
and it took a lot longer. So let's just double check that our sequences are the same. Everything is the same. Yep. 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 So why, why the heck would $1,500 more be even slower? In the base model. Let's do another export test. Maybe it just didn't like ProRes RAW or ProRes 422. Let's do our old favorite, the YouTube custom export. I'm just going to export straight from Premiere again. And off we go. The M1 Pro is like in Premiere a little more. This might be a lot different in DaVinci or a program that's optimized for these new chips when you install any of the Adobe stuff on these new MacBooks. You get a notification that, you know, this is optimized for Intel chips. So just give them some time and uh, they'll get there eventually. And that'll probably give us a bump up in speed. But for now, it's not looking so great. Wow. Okay, so our base model has finished the export first. Once again, we are able to export H.264 in the uh, YouTube preset from Premiere. Our max chip is still encoding still rendering it's crazy i totally thought it was going to be the opposite way around okay our pro max model finally finished its export and let's just stop our screen captures And we'll do another little test. This always takes some time just to export as 4K. And I use these screen captures in my videos a lot. I want the best quality possible. So off we go. Once again, the base model. Impressive. So the cheaper base model, with just a, another upgrade for CPU and GPU, it keeps beating the, the Max chip. Very impressive. So let's get another new project. We'll try the 6K footage. Maybe that is going to do something. Okay, we got 6K footage loaded up into a 1080p sequence. Playing back. Looks like they're both doing pretty good with playback. No problem scrubbing. Everything looks super smooth. All right, let's do a quick render in and out test. Oh, the Max is doing much better this time. Max wins. So the Max chip is very good at playback. It's very good at rendering. Not so hot at exporting. But maybe it'll redeem itself right now. Okay, we like these. And let's uh, do it again at ProRes export. High quality, and we're just going to export straight from Premiere again. All right, off they go. My money's on the base model. Well, this time the Max won, just by a nose. Let's try one more. 
We'll do it at H.264 in the YouTube 4K preset. All right, we've named the left one base and the right one max. I'm gonna export from Premiere again. And off we go. All right, wow. So the max chip this time blew the base model out of the water. It must really like H.264. Not quite sure what was going on with that 8K footage. All right, and our base model just finished up. So very interesting. Overall, looks like the Max chip definitely plays back everything a lot smoother. But like every computer acts a little funny sometimes due to different codecs and whatever you're working with. But the more you use this thing, you really find your workflow and you find what works for you. And I'm sure once you find <laughs> what that weird thing was going on, or if you don't if you don't have to worry about 8K footage and you saw that the 6K was just blasting. So I just loaded up my most recent video which was on the AirPods and we're just going to see what's faster for exporting a real world scenario type session. And we're going to do this in H.264 in the YouTube 4K. Export again. And we'll just export from Premiere once again. Oh my gosh. The fans are kicking in on the Max. So we're almost done with this export and the fans are starting to kick on in the max once again. Let me just get this microphone down there. You can see. So now what I did last night is I just simply played this file that I exported and then it really started to go. Fans are cooling down now and the base model still has not finished exporting. But still a little interesting that a simple export like this would uh, get those fans to kick on. And we're still waiting for the base model. Okay, and our base model just finished. The base model has not kicked its fans on yet. I have not heard the fans from the base yet. But let me know what you guys have found. If you've been testing your MacBook 14s, what were you doing when your fans kicked on? Let, let us know down below so we can all be aware of these uh, weird little things going on. And also so we know where to spend our hard-earned money. If $1,500 for the max upgrade is worth it, or if you could just stick around in the base model. It really depends on what type of workflow, what, ty what type of workload you're using. I hope this helped give you some insight to the Pro and the Max chip, and I'll see you at the next one.